Uh, hello. Uh, to those uh, you don't know me, my name is Murtaza Nazarov, and uh, I'm going to show the joint work with Johan Hoffman, and I'm a PhD student at uh, KTH. So the title of my talk is uh, Adaptive G2 Method for Compressible Flow. This is uh, the extension what Johan showed uh, recently in a, in a compressible flow framework. So here I put some outline of my talk. I will start by some introduction. Why do we need to extend this adaptive method? Then uh, I will show this uh, model problem, compressible oiler. Then uh, I will just show some slide about general Galeorkino verified G2 method. Then I, uh, I show some result from our recent development of a posterior error estimation for compressible error equation. Then I will conclude with some numerical results. So why do we need a posterior error analysis? So uh, we always, uh, when we de uh, derive some numerical method, the main point is to get efficient and reliable method. So what is efficient? Efficient is, is uh, if you want to calculate some quantity of interest or some force or some, uh, something which is important in the solution. So we, sh we should uh, design such a method that with the minimal cost of computation we, ca we could calculate this quantity. So this uh, efficiency uh, can be getting from uh, a posterior error analysis because uh, uh, we derive this kind of uh, inequality where we estimate exact error. So here U is exact solution and U capital U is computed solution. So uh, this, this one is error in some quantity. So quantity of interest could be the error for the whole system and uh, it could be drag force or any force. But in this talk we, we are going to calculate drag force. It is bounded by residual multiplied to dual weight. So what is residual? It is basically we calculate uh, approximate solution and we put to the equation and we get just residual. And dual weight is corresponding uh, adjoint problem and solution to that. So if you see residual is computable, dual solution is computable. So we get the bound of this error by something we, which we, cannot, we can com com uh, compute. So this bound, it gives reliable uh, method. So which means within some tolerance, and uh, we, we, we are ensure that uh, our numerical solution is getting closer to what we want to compute. Uh, so here is model equation, conservation of mass, momentum, and energy. And uh, so we use this boundary condition, it is sleep normal component of the velocity is equal to zero in each on all boundaries and the uh, initial condition is given and uh, so this is momentum m rho is density e total energy so we are going to calculate this equation in some domain q from r3 so depending on this Mach number we distinguish uh, supersonic subsonic and transonic flow so in this uh, talk, I will show some uh, examples for both uh, supersonic and transonic. Uh, here is G2 method. So what is G2 method? It is a finite element method, which is stabilized by some uh, simplified stab stabilization uh, terms. Here we stabilize convection term, and here is shock capturing term. And this term is just Galeorkin. <coughs> We just multiply the test function and do integration by parts. So because of choice of boundary condition, all these uh, integrals from the boundary, which appears, will disappear here. So uh, now we are interested to get uh, full a posterior error estimation for Euler equation in 3D and time dependent. And we know that Euler equation is uh, nonlinear. So here, I show how we linearized in this uh, work. So we assume we have some nonlinear problem f u equal to b. Uh, we assume it in some finite dimensional case. And uh, 
again, U is exact solution, and uh, we take U capital is approximate solution. So uh, total error is computed like this. And here, if I find U and put it to the equation, I get this one, which is equivalent. And what I do here, I uh, do Taylor expand around the state U. So I get something like this. And the all terms which has high order term, I put to the right. So uh, then this FU minus B, if I put, it is our residual. I just call it residual. So the left is a linear, linearization of this nonlinear problem. Uh, when we, instead of E, we just put U, so this is a linearized problem. And the right hand side, it is uh, residual. So here we directly see a relation between error and residual of the system. Uh, okay, then, uh, so uh, from the motivation I showed, we would like to have this kind of estimate. So we, sh we should take this kind of relation. And uh, here we in right hand side, we don't have anything information about exact solution. We have only residual, which is computable, and dual solution, which is also can be computable within some uh, numerical method. Then uh, how to get this relation? It just comes from the definition of adjoint operator. So uh, this is A star is adjoint operator to operator A. So here I just used these two equations. So I wrote this error in this form and I did integration by parts. Then I got this uh, linearized equation and just from this previous relation I got this one. So again, these high order terms, it's those terms which, uh, which has these high order terms in our Taylor expand. Uh, so uh, we, once we have this equation, this is the only linear equation, we can calculate residual and also we can get relation here between residual and, uh, and uh, error. So when we come to this step, we do backward step here and we do integration by parts to put this operator A to phi. Then we get dual problem. So we did like this, and we simply got this uh, linearized dual problem for the Euler equations. Uh, here, phi rho corresponds to the dual density. Phi u, it's a vector component. It also corresponds to the dual velocity. And phi p is dual pressure. So for simplicity, we had uh, conservation mass, momentum, and energy. But uh, in this derivation, we rewrite uh, compressible order equation in a term of density, velocity, and pressure. Because these variables are not independent. Uh, they are independent, and like momentum, it depends on uh, density and velocity. Then it much simplifies our analysis when we derive dual problem. So also uh, we got this kind of boundary condition also. And this is like uh, we started backward in time. OK. So this is, a, th this is a thing that I would like to have. And here I draw it here. So this is summation goes over all time intervals and uh, all elements in triangulation. So this is the relation which uh, I was talking before. And uh, this is like derivative of dual solution and residual. And we get extra term from this modeling error. When we do G2 method, this stabilization also includes. Uh, OK. So uh, this relation, if you see, I can call all terms with dependence d phi by s. And uh, the rest, which depends on residual multiplied to h by uh, epsilon, then I can just simply write this relation in this form. And uh, since we are interested on drag force as quantity of interest, uh, I was interested if it is possible to calculate this uh, error indicator. Because uh, if S increases fast, then uh, it is impossible to make this kind of bound for the error in drag. In fact, I uh, 
computed this term. This is L2 norm in Q, in space and time, and uh, with different uh, time intervals. And I saw that uh, when f fluid flow gets stabilized, and stability factor remains constant. So it means this one is constant. Epsilon depends on H multiplied to residual. And by mesh refinement, H decreases. And we can uh, bound and we can make error sharper and sharper in the quantity of interest. Uh, so this is like uh, steps of adaptive algorithm, which uh, Johan showed before. So uh, for the fixed mesh, we calculate forward problem and uh, corresponding dual problem. And then we calculate error indicator. We check if it is less than tolerance, which we want. We stop, otherwise we refine and go it again. Okay.